Ann Shannon, and welcome to another edition of Conversations from the Psychic Roundtable. Today we're talking about magic, and one of the things I've discovered is magic isn't the same for everybody. Like anything, there's one way to do it or another way to do it. And today we're off to Toronto to visit the Hermit's Laugh and owner Andrew McGregor to talk about what magic is to him. Hello, Andrew. Hey, Marilyn. Thanks for having me on. My pleasure. It's always good to chat with you. So tell me a little bit about where magic starts for you. So magic starts for me with needing to make a change. Something needs to be different. And that might be that business is slow. It might be that uh, I'm feeling really burned out. Um, or it might be that I want an answer to questions I don't have. And so it starts with sort of trying to understand something about what I need and what change do I want to try and make from, from where I am now towards getting somewhere different. All righty. And so magic is the tool that you use to facilitate that transformation, if you will. Exactly. Magic is the thing that allows me to change myself, my circumstance, my uh, road to where I might want to go to build bridges to other places and other possibilities. It's a way of uh, consciously creating a future that's more in alignment with what you want to be living. And do I have to go off and sit on a mountain to do this? Only if you really want to. You know, the real, one of the big important things for me about magic is it really is well suited to start into where you are, right? And that means in your life, where are you at in yourself, in your circumstances, uh, and also geographically, right? Where, where are you here? Are you going to connect with the land? I'm here in Toronto. It's not very mountainous. I'd have to go a long way, but I don't have to go far to find a river. I don't have to go far to find the lake. There's trees all over the place that I can talk to. Um, but yeah, we don't need to do something extraordinary in order to access magic. So it's right here in my living room or in my backyard. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that makes it uh, rather doable, don't you think? I do. I think that a lot of people think that things need to be complicated. You know, when it comes to divination, when it comes to magic, when it comes to spirituality. But I think that living a life that's connected to those things, magic becomes a continuous act in your life. For me, before I came here today, I cooked a bunch of food and fed the ancestors and made some offerings to the spirits I work with. I Yesterday, I made a small piece of art and gave it to the ancestors as a thank you for my relationship with them. And this kind of ongoing connection is the living art of having magic. And when you do that, you don't need diamonds and mountains and rare incenses from things that have been gone for thousands of years. You can just work with what's around you. So one of the things that is that I hear from you that I haven't heard from other people is this work with the ancestors as part of magic. Tell me more about that, how that connects. So when we look at the spirit world, there's all sorts of entities and beings out there. You know, there's, you know, your grandmother, there's your great grandparents, there's this deity and that deity and that uh, elemental being and this spirit and, and all those things. But the reality is, is that in most people's lives, the ones that care the most about them are the ancestors. They are directly related. Probably you knew some of them. And they have this sort of connection to your lineage that allows for more interaction, more involvement, and more of a vested interest in the outcomes. So if you think about it this way, you know, you, you had a hard time and you went and talked to your grandmother. Maybe she slipped 20 bucks in your pocket when you weren't looking, right? Maybe she cooked you a dinner and listened to you complain about your relationship for a while. Well, that's true on the other side too, right? 
And so those spirits have that vested interest and that willingness to connect, to help, and to do what they can. And because they're on the spirit side, what they can do is sometimes quite different than what they could do when they were on this side. It becomes a much more magical relationship. So I think grandma can still slip me $20. It might come in an e-transfer from somebody else. Exactly, right? Yeah. Might yeah. come in terms of a, an unexpected client or question, a sudden rebate, you know? Because the other thing that people need to understand about magic is it may show up in terms of finding $20 on the sidewalk. Could be, right? But it might also be, oh, wait, your hydro bill was overcharged by this money and here's your $20 back, right? It's going to come in the ways that it can. And, you know, we need to be open to that and allow ourselves to see those connections between what we worked and what we asked for and the pathways through which it returns to us. I had somebody ask me yesterday about finding dimes. And of course, the, the saying goes that your ancestors are thinking about you when you find dimes. I mm -hmm. sometimes think it's, uh, I, I, we're trying to get the message through to you. Would you pay attention? Uh, message uh, quite often. So part of magic is paying attention and being tuned in to the messages that are coming your way. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, you need to be listening, you need to pay attention, you need to notice when something draws your attention, right? Like when you see that dime, when you find a feather from a bird, you know, when you you see a, a random sign on the side of a van that, that's a saying that your uncle used to say, you know, there are lots of ways in which they can be around reminding us if we're looking and we're open to those connections. And if we're not sitting there hoping that it's going to show up like a voice from the sky opens up and says, Marilyn, go to this address. There's $20 under a chair. Take it. It's yours. Right? It's important to, to understand that, that that's not likely to happen. But lots of wonderful things are quite possible and quite common. So do we have to ask the ancestors for help? You know, when we talk about magic, I, I think of it as we're doing something. Do, so what, what do we do to connect with the ancestors to receive these messages or to make the magic happen? So if we want to connect to magic with the ancestors, I think it's always helpful to be intentional. And so the first thing that I think that needs to happen is we need to start a relationship, right? If you just go knock on the door and be like, Hey, Grandma, I haven't seen you since last Christmas, but can I have 20 bucks? Maybe, right? But maybe not. And maybe not the second or third time, right? So we need to invest that time in building those connections. And that can be simple. You show up once a week and you put in a glass of water or a cup of coffee. You'd be like, hey, folks, just thinking about you, you know? Um, number two, we need to actually set some kind of intention, right? And we need to speak to them preferably aloud because, you know, I think they, they need to hear us. And we think that what's in our mind is clear, but the words we speak are more clear. They're more concrete. So we need to say, hey, you know, I'm having these problems and, you know, I'm in this lockdown situation and I'm worried about my work. And can you help make sure that this stays stable for me? Can you help make sure that this gets in the way? Can you help make sure that I can access support around this? Whatever it is, right? And we don't always have to know what the answer is, especially once we have a good relationship with a spirit or an ancestor. We can just be like, you know, I don't even know what to do here, but I sure hope that you can do something either to get me the answer or to just make sure that it goes okay. One of the very unique uses of tarot cards for working with you is to connect with the ancestors. How does that work for you? So for me, there's a couple different pieces that go with that. One is I uh, have a very clear sense of uh, intergenerational magic and ancestral sort of genealogical approaches. And so I look at the order of the cards and think of them as generations going backwards from where we are. We can connect with them in that way. Secondly, because I use a very uh, multifaceted way of working with the cards now, I have a long history of studying meanings. 
you know, there's all sorts of different stuff that I've done, but I'm also very open and intuitive. And so when I put down a card, I'm like, okay, who, who's speaking here? What's speaking here? And sometimes that message will come through me. And I'll be like, oh, this feels like it's your grandfather here to say this and this and this. And sometimes the client will look at the card and say, oh, this looks exactly like my great aunt. And I'm like, oh, what would she say about this situation? And you could feel that energy as they start to come in and all the hairs on your arm stand up, you know? So it's about conversations. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That we were talking, I was talking with, uh, with Rhonda earlier today and I mentioned how important our words are. And you talk about we need to speak to our ancestors out loud. In your sessions, you say, this feels like this person or that person, and what would they have to say about it? Is it really that simple? It can be. It absolutely can be, right? I think that, and when we start, right? If, if you're out there and you're reading cards and you're listening to this and you're like, oh, I'd like to try this out. Look for that simplicity. Pay attention to that simplicity. There are many complicated things we can do with tarot, and there are many things that, you know, maybe I might do after 35 years of doing this kind of stuff that the person at the beginning is not going to do. But that doesn't matter, right? What matters is you start the conversation, you start showing up, you start building that point of connection, right? You start saying, all right, every Sunday I'm going to get up and I'm going to when I make my morning coffee, I'm going to make an extra one for the ancestors. And maybe I'm going to flip a card and see what they want to say to me that day. And these things will start that dialogue and allow that conversation to build and to grow into, you know, wherever you want it to go, wherever they want it to go. And over time, it can become very rich and very deep and very uh, simple and easy to connect to. And other people will look at it and say, oh, how do you possibly do that? And you say, well... Just make a cup of extra cup of coffee on a Sunday and you'll get there. How wonderful. And that connection to our lineage can help heal some very painful and painful experiences, but also return us to joy. Absolutely, right? And you know, let's be clear. If your your one of your parents has passed on and you had a horrible relationship, and in your opinion, they're a, were a horrible person and there was all sorts of trauma. Just don't invite them in. Just don't start that. Just like, you know, I really like to talk to one of my grandparents. I really like to talk to somebody who's, you know, elevated and at peace for my lineage. You know, we could set our intentions that way too, right? You know, because not all of our ancestors are suddenly wise on the other side. And if you had a long and problematic relationship with somebody, leave that for later or leave it for never. It, you know, we're not required to deal with those, just like we're not required to deal with those people in life either. Andrew, thank you for sharing this uh, fascinating work of working with the ancestors and magic. Where can people get a hold of you? So I'm at thehermitslamp.com online. Uh, my store is in Toronto at 1076 Bloor Street West near Dufferin Station. Uh, and we ship and deliver everywhere. So you can order online and be happy to get all sorts of great stuff out to you. Thanks again. My pleasure.